If the new cap on BP's wellhead holds, we may be moving from containment to cleanup of this catastrophe. Still, it's hard to measure the long-term impacts of the Deepwater Horizon disaster on the Gulf of Mexico. By my second trip to the region, there are over 45,000 people and 6,000 vessels and aircraft involved in the containment and cleanup. Still, some of the cleanup effects are questionable. Off Ocean Springs, Mississippi, with Gulf Coast Research Lab Director Bill Hawkins, I watch a crew of 10 men with three flatboats trying to spray wash about 80 feet of oiled marsh grass to little effect. Nearby, they're trying to protect rock jetty rather than the wetlands. In Louisiana's Barataria Bay, I've seen miles of oiled wetlands that act as the nurseries and filters of the sea and provide a livelihood for fishermen in their communities. Flying over the Gulf with waterkeeper John Wathan and Southwing's pilot Tom Hutchings, we saw over a hundred dolphins in a sperm well trapped and dying in the oil. John took the pictures of these animals. The return of brown pelicans to the Gulf was seen as a huge success and environmental victory. Now these birds are threatened by the oil and chemical dispersants as our sea turtles, tuna, and whale sharks. Oh, look at that. Where is he? Right here. See how oh, yeah. cryptic there? I saw some movement. <laughs> I go out with scientists from the lab, sampling possible toxic impacts on juvenile triple tail fish, also known as blackfish. These baby fish live under floating sargassum algae. Some change their colors to gold and green to look like the sargassum. Others are now living under floating oil blobs and camouflage themselves by turning black and brown like the oil. At the entry to Biloxi Bay, there are extensive booms to try and protect the estuary and a fleet of shrimp boats skimming oil. Last time I was here, less than five years ago, many of these boats had been driven ashore by Hurricane Katrina. I drive from Louisiana and Mississippi to Pensacola, Florida, where the sugar white sands of local beaches are boomed off and cleanup crews are removing tar balls that have also washed ashore. Here I board the Coast Guard cutter Resolve, heading out to the Deepwater Horizon spill site where a new cap is being placed that will hopefully stop the ongoing eruption of oil from the wellhead until a relief well can kill it. Steaming to the source, we pass through different kinds of ugly oil that looks brown as maple syrup in our wake, oil sheets in deep purple and gold, aged orange oil and new black oil. The last time I flew over this part of the Gulf, there were oil slicks out to the horizon. The BP source has now become a floating city of some 75 rigs and ships and workboats and a giant super tanker. The Q4000 rig is burning off 6,000 barrels of oil a day in a black plume of smoke. While collector ships like the Helix producer are flaring natural gas and controlled burns of surface oil are being set off on the horizon. This reminds me of oil terminals off Iraq I visited in the Persian Gulf War Zone. Only this is more like cancer than war with the metastasizing oil spreading across the Gulf. The chemical dispersants are the chemo, the burns, radiation. We visit BP's command and control ship, Secor Lee, where I'm told the cap is now in place and ready for testing. A Coast Guard Dolphin helicopter flies us back to Air Station New Orleans, where their helicopter crew saved over 6,000 people during Hurricane Katrina. On the flight, we fly over streaks of aging oil spread for miles across the Gulf. Though fewer people have died, this is a longer lasting and potentially more destructive disaster than Katrina for the Gulf's people and marine wildlife. And if this hurricane season is as bad as predicted, it could also be raining oil and blackening beaches from Florida to Texas by this fall. Our efforts to boom off bird rookeries and protect the coastline may be valiant, but still seem feeble more than 80 days into this mess. Among other needed changes, we have to end our dependence on coal and oil, energy systems of the 16th and 19th centuries, develop clean offshore energy. After all, no coastline or culture was ever destroyed by a windspill or a turning tide.